Hi there. Today's edition of the list is only one entry, number 70, but it is a series of four novels, Justine, Balthazar, Mount Olive, and Clea. These four novels comprise what is known as the Alexandria Quartet. Let us begin with the simple plot of Justine. First off, it is written in a quite poetic even affected style, as though it's being written in a way that is being excessively literary. However, the story is very engaging. It is about British expatriate who's gone to Egypt, to Alexandria, to teach English, basically. What can we say about this character? Feckless. He drinks a lot. He hangs around these low-down, dirty pubs with his literary friends who he is quite jealous of because they have published more than him and they have received more accolades than he has. His literary output has been, if he's published anything, it's of no notice. He has a girlfriend. He's dating a woman who is a dancer in a bit of a cabaret, which is to say that she is she's a prostitute. She dances and men pay to take her on dates. And somehow this man, who's quite a loser, has the good or bad fortune of miraculously having a secret affair with the wife of the most affluent and successful businessman in the city. And this is the story of Justine. Uh, Justine is the wife of this extremely powerful and dangerous businessman. He fears for his life, but he is just too excited by the prospects of this affair with this woman. So Justine is written as a first-person perspective of that man, that author. And when we come to the second volume, Balthazar, Balthazar is a doctor in Alexandria. And what? I don't even know his name. So the reason I don't know his name is because he is unnamed. So the unnamed protagonist who's had the affair with Justine in the first novel has written out the entire episode as a novel. And what he has done is he's, he's mailed it to his friend Balthazar, who is a doctor familiar with all of the characters from the first novel, as well as many more, not many more, a few more who come to play a significance in the second novel. And what happens is Balthazar, the doctor, receives the manuscript, he reads it, and then he goes to visit the author of Justine, and he explains to him quite patronizingly, yes, it's a nice novel that you've written, but you really hardly know anything of the true story that was going on because you were just so obsessed with this woman that you didn't see all of these other things that were taking place under your nose. And what happens in Balthazar is that it just throws a grenade into the entire story. People you thought were doing this or these were their actions and motivations, something completely else. Justine, the woman that he was having an affair with in the first novel, many other motivations are made clear. Balthazar exposes like not even one extra layer, perhaps three or even four additional layers on top of Justine. Yeah, because Justine is a fairly simple story. He's having an affair with her. It's a dangerous situation. He's afraid for his life. What happens? The doctor comes in and says, well, this one and this one and this one and this one had all of these other motivations that you weren't aware of. So what do you think happens in novel number three, Mount Olive? Perhaps I should tell you who the character Mount Olive is. Mount Olive is the British diplomat to Egypt who is stationed in Alexandria. Mount Olive knows of all of these people, but as well, he has his secret intelligence files, which also is giving us another massive layer to the story about the machinations that are going on beneath the surface. So again, the story becomes one more time, 100% more complex than it was originally. And now it's it's just, it's like the story doesn't expand. Like it's, it's not as though another chapter has been added. It's like, it's like a new dimension. Another dimension is added to this story. First layer, fairly simple. Second layer, quite a bit more complex. Third layer, it's getting ridiculous now. The layers upon layers. Clea is the name of an artist who is again familiar 
with all of these people. And she adds the last layer to the story. Clea's addition to the Alexandria Quartet is not as I felt a bomb had been dropped on me when I realized what had been added. And Clea's story finishes off the series. She adds her bit in sort of a finalizing way, what she knows about the results of this situation and that relationship. And she knows what happens to that political end. Sorry, I'm being so vague, but this series of novels, it is like you are trapped in the labyrinth and searching for the exit. But you've got, you've got Mount Olive and Clea to get through before you can find the exit and say, ah, okay, all right. Have I actually told you anything at all about the story? In the first novel, Justine, this unnamed British expatriate has an affair with her. It's a dangerous situation. And perhaps the story revolves around the idea that Justine, once upon a time, had a child who was given up for adoption. And that is the beginning of the mystery of the Alexandria Quartet. At least a dozen characters who are influential in the motivation of where the story heads. So I knew it was going to be impossible to do a good job to adequately explain the story. But that's okay, because I don't think it is the plot that motivates our interest so much. It is the new facets that are being added to the story with every novel, which make this. I've read this series of novels three times. So let me tell you about this. Justine, you see it back there. I have seen that novel, and I think that edition, that red one with the handprint, in just about every used bookstore I've ever been in. And I've always looked at it and wondered, why would a modern author name this novel after another novel by the Marquis de Sade? This one, Justine by the Marquis de Sade. It's so dirty. You've never read anything as dirty as this. All right, I have the list. There's this Alexandria Quartet. I've got to go on the internet and figure out what that means. Four novels, by the way, which means that the list of the 100 greatest yada, 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 is actually not 100 books. It's 100 titles. I think I've calculated it that, in fact, it's something closer to about 140 books. We'll get to that eventually. I bought Justine. I read it. I thought the style was a bit inflated and the story somewhat simple. And I don't like that combination of this very lofty writing combined with, well, depictions of squalor, a man who is on the cusp of existence, drinking, having affairs with loose women. It left me cold. I think it was two years before I got the other books. I think what happened was, is I went back to Canada, I did a big book haul, and I brought back the rest of the Alexandria Quartet. And when I started Balthazar, I was really taken aback. I thought, okay, okay, this is a bit odd. I've got to really remember what happened in Justine. But when I caught on this doctor, who hardly even figures in the first novel. He's mentioned in passing. Suddenly for this outsider character to add so much dimension to the initial story, honestly, blown away. So I read Balthazar and Mount Olive and Clea in a couple of weeks. I just couldn't put the series down. And as soon as I finished Clea, I immediately had to reread Justine. Bang! To take me back to the first novel and to understand the restraint that Lawrence Durrell is showing. He has this vision of what he wants to do with this series. And the first book is he's touching on a few things and he's mentioning a couple of characters and he's alluding vaguely to certain occurrences. But you can't get that when you read Justine for the first time. You can just get that little partial glimpse. It's a hint of what could be in store. Like I, I have a small obsession with this series is that if I even begin to start reading Justine, I have to read the entire series one to four without interruption because it's just, you're, you're given this little picture and it's a nice little picture. It's quaint. It's a bit deviant of oh, all this weird scenario in Alexandria, this, the way this British man, he's a bit of a scumbag, seems to be operating. Balthazar, the doctor who knows secrets, seems to be laying it bare. This is what really happened. And then Mount Olive, the diplomat, comes in. He's like got this lofty, godlike perspective. And Clea, well, she's the artist. She's kind of the confidant of all of these characters. So she knows things about people, but she's, she's good at keeping secrets. So it comes out by and by. Lawrence Durrell, there's a couple of excellent 
biographies about him that was originally created by the BBC because if you're interested in Lawrence Durrell he was his family was quite famous I believe they made a, a series a, like a television series about his family Gerald Durrell was also a writer and he was a naturalist and he loved animals and he wrote books about it like Gerald Durrell's famous novel is called My Family and Other Animals which is on my shelf up there and I believe there's a television series which is called The Durrells which is about their life in Greece Lawrence Durrell and his brother Gerald Durrell were just young men. Teenagers, perhaps? I don't know what happened to Lawrence after that, but he went back to Greece and he lived as an expatriate and a writer. And he was also a friend of Henry Miller. Now, I will warn you, this is high literature, very literary style, where it seems that every sentence is a minor poem. The reason for that is, there is a reason. The reason is that the writer of Justine is that expatriate, unnamed British man who has aspirations to be a writer. So once you've read the entire series and you know who he is, because in the next three novels, all of the characters comment on who he is, and you learn quite a bit more about who he actually is rather than his first person perspective from the first book, you see why it is written in that high-flown style is because he was trying to be very literary. As far as I'm concerned, it is the most intellectual, surprising, clandestine work of literature I've ever read. So if you are interested, the first book, Justine, can be a bit of a tough one to get through. But once you get to Balthazar and you see what is taking place and you understand that Justine is just, it's just the front door to the entire story. It's a, it's a ornate and very splendid front door. You get to Balthazar and all of a sudden you're in this mansion. And what happens when you get to Mount Olive? Well, then you jump on the helicopter and you, you see the whole perspective from <laughs> way up in the air. And you're like, wow, okay, now I really get the big picture. And it just keeps expanding. There we are. That is number 70 on the list. As far as literature goes, I hold that in the highest esteem. Like he gives you a box of puzzle pieces and that's his job. And now your job as the reader is you have to put the puzzle together. You have to make those leaps from novel to novel and see the different perspectives and re-examine the story as it is told from those different points of view. There's very little literature that I've read that I'm aware of that even comes close to this. This is, you know, this is the diamond grade literature. Just, I, I hesitate a little bit because I, this is not for people who've read On the Road and Catcher in the Rye and they think they have a lot of literary chops. You know, this is, like once you've waded through Virginia Woolf and D.H. Lawrence, and once you've got your head round George Orwell and Burgess and Borges, like once you've really sampled the gamut, then, I think you're ready to read the Alexandria Quartet. It's not its not for the literary amateurs, I'm afraid. You, you need to really examine what you're reading. The first time I read Justine, I took a two-year hiatus just because I was frankly uninterested. I got the rest of the series, read them all, reread Justine. A couple of years later, read it again because I was just fascinated. Like I needed to read the entire series again, quickly, the whole series of novels in one month. I read it a few years ago just, just because it's... There's nothing better than this. Just one entry on the list today, entry number 70. This is one of the reasons I started a YouTube channel to talk about literature like this. I've never heard of Lawrence Durrell. I had to find Lawrence Durrell on my own. I don't know if he's taught at any universities, but if you're a writer, that is something to aspire to. Okay, thank you very much for watching. This is Grant Loves Books. These are the books I love, and this is why I love books. This literature is the reason I love literature. Thank you for watching. So he is also...